Howdy. It's Kyle talking about the San Joaquin Valley of California. It's an often overlooked or forgotten part of the state, but it's a part of the state that the vast majority of Americans rely upon. And it just happens to be the part of the state that I'm from. Living in the South, people will often ask you what part of California I'm from. And they'll ask me, are you from there? And I'll say, no. There? No. There? No. Not there either. No. 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 Oh, God, no. 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 Oh, they're so cute, but no. So, if I'm not from any of those parts of the state, what part of the state am I talking about? Well, let me give you a few hints. The part where all this stuff comes from. So in this video, I'm going to discuss various aspects of the geography of this part of the state. I'll be going over the human and physical aspects that makes this part of California a very unique place. I've previously posted a video comparing Northern California to Southern California, and I didn't really mention this part of the state at all because it doesn't really identify with either. And yeah, the northern end of the valley would be considered Northern California, but for the most part, this part of the state is neither NorCal nor SoCal. It's the valley. The San Joaquin Valley is a long, narrow valley located right in the middle of the state. It's an eight-county region that stretches from the San Joaquin River Delta to the north all the way down to the transverse mountain ranges to the south. When you look at a geologic map of the state, the Central Valley is very prominent, but the San Joaquin Valley is only the southern two-thirds of the entire Central Valley. The northern portion is the Sacramento Valley, so in this video I'll be talking about the San Joaquin Valley, which is the area south of the San Joaquin River Delta. To the west, it's flanked by the relatively low coast ranges, and to the east by the very high Sierra Nevada. The Sierra Nevada are a very steep mountain range. You can go from just above sea level at the valley floor to over 10,000 feet in elevation and about 35 miles as a crow flies. At the southern end of the valley are the Tehachapi Mountains, and if you're from California, you know about going over the grapevine to get from the valley to the LA area. And contrary to what a lot of people think, this is not some rural, sparsely populated area. All eight counties in the region have a population greater than 150,000, and five of the counties have a population greater than 450,000. Plus, there are seven cities in the region with a population greater than 100,000. The population of the whole region is over 4 million people, so if it were its own state, it would have more people than either Connecticut or Oregon, and have about the same population as either Kentucky or Oklahoma. Overall, this is a fairly poor part of the state with incomes much lower than the coastal areas and poverty rates that are much higher. However, the cost of living in the valley is pretty low. All eight counties in the region have a cost of living below the national average, but have wages above the national average. So you'll often hear people talk about how expensive California is. Well, not this part of the state. All eight counties in the region have a Hispanic majority, so that means the entire region as a whole has a Hispanic majority. It varies from county to county and city to city, but overall the region is about 55% Hispanic, 40% white, 5% Asian, which is predominantly Filipino, Hmong, Chinese, and Korean, and about 3% black. This is also the part of the country that has the highest percentage of the population that are illegal immigrants, predominantly Mexican. And there are many parts of the valley where Spanish is the predominant language. The largest city in the San Joaquin Valley is Fresno, with a population of about 540,000, which makes it the 34th largest city in the U.S., and Fresno County is the most populous county in the valley, with just over a million people. For a lot of folks in California along the coast, Fresno is kind of the butt of a lot of jokes. It's just that ugly old town with a bunch of hicks and illegals. During the 90s and 2000s, Fresno consistently ranked as one of the most dangerous cities in America, with some of the highest violent crime ranks in the country. However, things have improved quite a bit in the past 10 years to the point where Fresno's crime rate is just above average now, so it still is above average, but to go from one of the most dangerous cities in America to just above average is pretty good. One of the things that's helped improve the city is that a lot of the folks from the Bay Area or LA that have been priced out have found they can buy a house in Fresno pretty cheap and have realized that it really isn't that bad there. It's definitely the cultural hub of the valley with it having the only international airport in the region, and it's also the gateway to the national parks. At the south end of the valley is the second largest city in the region, Bakersfield, with a population of about 400,000. 
And similar to Fresno, there's been some improvements lately because you've had people move from LA or other parts of the coastal areas that are being priced out, but you can buy a house pretty cheap in Bakersfield. This is also the only part of the valley where oil plays an important part of the economy. There's almost no oil in the rest of the valley, but there's quite a bit around Bakersfield. At the north end of the San Joaquin Valley is the third largest city in the region, which is Stockton, with a population of about 320,000. There's a very good deep water port there, so it's very interesting to see these large ships in the valley. And if you've heard of Stockton, it's probably because of negative reasons. The city infamously filed for bankruptcy back in 2012. And to top it all off, it's also the most expensive city in the valley in which to live. South of Stockton is Modesto, which is pretty similarly sized, but is much nicer than Stockton. It's not quite as close to the San Francisco Bay Area, so the house values aren't rising as much, even though it is the second most expensive city to live in the valley. South of that are the counties of Merced and Madera, and the San Joaquin Valley is one of the poorer parts of California, and these are the two poorest counties in the valley. Approximately one-third of the population of these two counties lives below the poverty line, and you only have two-thirds of the population in Merced County that are high school graduates, and in Madera County, it's only 58% of the population are high school graduates. South of Fresno and north of Bakersfield is the county that I'm from, Tulare County, with a population of about 470,000, and the largest city in the county is my hometown of Visalia with about 140,000. Now, I promise you I'm not just saying this because I'm from there, but Visalia is the nicest city in the valley. The household and per capita income are well above the valley average, and the poverty rate is well below the valley average. It also has a really nice downtown, nice main street that's been well preserved for the years. But once you get outside of Visalia, the county is very poor. In fact, if Visalia were not there, Tulare County would be the poorest county in the entire state. There are a lot of small migrant farm worker communities that range between a few hundred and a few thousand people, and these places are pretty poor. There are a lot of undocumented workers living in these little towns, and some of these places have near third world living conditions. Growing up, we used to make fun of these places, but now that I'm older, I see things from a different perspective, but yeah, these places are really poor. There's one military base located in the valley, and that's Lamore Naval Air Station located in Kings County, just west of Visalia. It's the largest naval air base in the western U.S. and where my dad was stationed. One thing I wanted to mention about these counties is that four of them have large parts of their area that aren't within the valley itself. The eastern portions of Madera, Fresno, and Tulare counties are high up in the Sierra Nevada. Madera County is home to portions of Yosemite National Park as well as the Ansel Adams Wilderness. Kings Canyon National Park is located within the eastern portions of Fresno County. And Sequoia National Park, which is home to the largest trees in the world, is in the eastern portions of Tulare County. Kern County is unique and it represents the southern end of the Sierra Nevada range and the western portion of the county is valley floor, but on the eastern side of the Sierra, it's Mojave Desert. So it's the only county in the valley that has land on the other side of the Sierra and the only county that has desert. A lot of Californians dismiss this part of the state because the coastal part of California has the greatest weather on the planet, but the valley is not the part of the state that has that wonderful weather. However, even though the weather isn't as nice as the coastal areas, it's still much nicer than you get anywhere back east. Late spring to early fall has very high temperatures. Temperatures above 90 are the norm, and temperatures above 100 are pretty common. But because it's so dry with very low dew points, even in the middle of summer at night, it gets pretty nice, as opposed to the southeast where it stays hot and nasty all night long. But winters in the valley are very pleasant, with high temperatures in the 50s and overnight lows in the upper 30s, and this is a place where when it gets below freezing, people start to really freak out. And just like the rest of California, when it does rain, which isn't very often, it's only going to be during the winter and early spring. So you know from late spring through the fall, it's going to be sunny and dry. And in my lifetime, it has snowed in the valley once. And I think it snowed twice in the past 60 years or so. During the winter, you have a high probability of tule fog being formed, which is a very thick radiation fog. Because of the topography of the valley with mountains surrounding it on three sides, the fog just gets trapped and there's nowhere to go. And this is some pretty serious fog. I remember there were times you couldn't even see across the street. And if you're in a city, it isn't so bad because you have the urban heat island keeping things a little bit warmer and allowing the fog to burn off. But once you get way out into the countryside, some of the rural areas, it can be pretty seriously thick. A lot of parts of the country have snow days for school. Well, we had fog days. We'd wake up on foggy mornings of school days, turn on the TV, and there would be a ticker going across the bottom of the screen, kind of like ESPN scores. 
It'd go through each of the school districts and the region and say whether or not they'd have a delay in the start of the school day or whether or not the entire day was canceled. So my brothers and I would be sitting there going, come on, come on, give us a fog day, give us a fog day. And it was pretty rare for the entire school day to be canceled, but it was pretty common for school to be delayed by a few hours to give the fog a chance to burn off. And that was always a real treat for us because then we could watch the prices right before going to school. The topography of the valley has another very negative effect on the region, and that is the air pollution. For the same reason the fog is trapped in the valley, air pollution is trapped in as well. A lot of it is smog and particulate matter that comes in from the San Francisco Bay area that gets blown into the valley and down to the end and it has nowhere to go because it's just surrounded by mountains. But a lot of it is also because of the population in the valley itself as well as agricultural dust. The air pollution there is very bad and I would say that's the absolute worst thing about this region. In fact, it's the worst air pollution in the entire developed world. So now I want to discuss the most prominent aspects of the San Joaquin Valley and what makes it such an important place and that's the agriculture. There are over 3,000 counties in the U.S., and six of the eight San Joaquin Valley counties rank in the top 10 nationally, including each of the top three. Two-thirds of all the fruits and nuts grown within the U.S. are coming from the San Joaquin Valley, and they call California the land of fruits and nuts, and where I'm from, they say, yeah, now pay us for them. But it isn't just a total ag, it's also the diversity of the ag. So it isn't one particular crop or one particular aspect of ag that makes it so big. There's a lot of different things going on that adds up to one huge agricultural sector. This area grows 97% of all the U.S. tangerines. And if you've ever had those small ones you peel, they're called halos or smiles or cuties, whatever. Those are all coming from the valley. It grows 95% of all the table grapes, the kind you eat, not wine grapes. 95% of all the lemons, 92% of all the carrots, 79% of all the apricots, 60% of all the oranges, 60% of all the peaches, so way more than Georgia or South Carolina combined, 57% of all the cantaloupes, 34% of all the grapefruits, and it's by far number one in pomegranates, but I couldn't find an exact number on how many it grows. And there are many crops that are only grown commercially in the San Joaquin Valley and nowhere else in the U.S., the valley grows all of the walnuts, pistachios, almonds, honeydew, nectarines, and olives, as well as the only place in the U.S. that grows grapes for raisins. But it's by no means just crops. This is also the number one part of the country for dairy. There's more dairy in the valley than any state in the U.S., including Wisconsin, and the valley is a number one area for milk, butter, and ice cream. Wisconsin does produce more cheese than the valley, but the overall dairy is much larger in the valley than any other state. And Tulare County, where I'm from, is the number one dairy county in the entire country. Tulare County crowns a dairy princess each year. I guess they couldn't call her a dairy queen, but they do have the dairy princess. And you'll see things with cow print on it all over the valley. You'll see car seats, mailboxes, even cars themselves painted up like dairy cows. And whenever I'm on a road trip with my wife and we're approaching my hometown, she'll start to smell the dairies and she's like, oh, this is pretty gross. I'm like, well, it smells like home. For me, there are four major sources of pride of being from Tulare County. One, it's the number one dairy county in the country. Two, it's the number three crop growing county in the entire country. And the other two aren't because of the valley itself, but it is home to the giant sequoia trees, which are the largest living things in the world. And it's also home to Mount Whitney, which is the highest mountain in the contiguous U.S. But I will just gloss over that it has the worst air pollution in the country. However, there are some negatives with relying so much upon ag. For one, the unemployment rate is always going to be higher here than anywhere else in the U.S. So even when the economy is booming, you'll have a fairly high unemployment rate in the valley. And this is because so many of the crops are seasonal. So when things are out of season, a lot of farm workers are out of work. And that leads to the second major negative for the valley, and that's the high rate of illegal immigration. For whatever reason, citizens won't work in the field. So the farmers have to hire some of these illegal immigrants or let the fruit rot on the ground. And the third negative with relying so much on ag is that the poverty rate is going to be pretty high because a lot of the farm worker wages are pretty low. So even though there are plenty of things to brag about the valley, there are also plenty of things that are pretty bad. Now I want to discuss some of the signature foods of the valley. One is tri-tip, which is California-style barbecue. It's a unique cut of beef that is slow cooked. It's similar to Texas brisket. And just like brisket, it's eaten without sauce. So it's kind of an insult for the chef if you're putting sauce on your tri-tip. And because the valley is so big for crops and dairy, there are a couple of unique types of ice cream you get there. One is orange ice cream. It's not orange sherbet, it's actual orange ice cream. 
and the other is pistachio ice cream, which is my personal favorite flavor. But probably the most well-known aspect of San Joaquin Valley food is not really the food itself, but a method of delivery, and that's the taco truck. They originated out in the fields where these guys are working out there, and there's no refrigerator to put your lunch in, and there's not exactly a Wendy's nearby. So these trucks would roll up to the fields, and because the vast majority of the workers were Mexican, it was usually Mexican food, and that's how the taco truck was born. And even after different types of food were used in the trucks, they were still called taco trucks. And you fast forward to today, food trucks are super hipster, and they're found throughout the U.S. But overall, this is a pretty nice place to live, and I didn't realize this growing up. I thought it was terrible, but since then I've moved to other places. I've lived in other states and other parts of the country, and I realized, wow, the San Joaquin Valley really isn't that bad. So those are just some of the major aspects of the San Joaquin Valley that I wanted to discuss, and as a title of the video alludes to, it's an often overlooked part of the state, but I think it's important for people to know that California isn't all tie-dye wearing, VW bus driving hippies on surfboards and skateboards, working for Google or Apple or some movie studio, living in a million dollar 1,000 square foot house, or paying $3,000 a month for a shoebox apartment. There are many states in the country where there are lightly populated rural areas that are forgotten by the larger urban centers, but the San Joaquin Valley has over 4 million people, which is more than 23 states. So this area isn't podunk, it's just often overshadowed by the larger urban areas. I hope you found the information in this video useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and consider subscribing to this channel if you're interested in hearing more about US geography, travel, cross country road tripping, and just other things about geography from a nerdy perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.